What's up crafters, it's Ethan from Kingdom Crafter, and today we're diving into the world of ZBrush to sculpt a modular cliff and rock asset. Previously, I had a live stream covering similar topics, but it kind of sucked, and I felt like you guys deserve something way higher quality, and that's what we're going to deliver today. The rock that you see in front of you is not quite a finished asset, but it's a good preview of the sort of approach we're going to take today in sculpting our own new asset from scratch. And we're going to do that by going through four different stages. So whether you are using ZBrush or something similar or uh, sculpting a different type of rock, these stages will still apply and help you achieve high fidelity results for your game in no time. So with that out of the way, if you're ready to rock, let's do it. So stage one, establishing the base. Think of this as the foundation of a house, except it's a rock. And what we want to do is achieve forms that are interesting and that can give us a lot to work with moving forward. So there's two ways that I like to approach making the foundation, right? So if you hit Shift F, this will show you the wireframe for your geometry that you're working with. And most people using ZBrush are familiar with DynaMesh. And this is one of the methods you could use. So when you're altering topology and you want to clean it up, you can DynaMesh in areas. And all you have to do is hold down your mask, which is control, drag out an open space, and it will remesh, redynamesh that geometry. So we can make this even lower resolution here to work with. And you have to make a change on your geometry when you use dynamesh. Because if you don't change anything and you just keep dragging out, it's not going to do anything. Now, the next method is Sculptress Pro, which this is a way to enable uh, dynamic topology happening on the go depending on what brush you're using. So instead of having to re mesh after you're sculpting, if you want to create new topology in the area that you're sculpting in real time, you use what's called Sculptress Pro. Go to Brush and go down here to Sculptress Pro. You can see that there's an enable option. So if we enable this, turn off Use Global, and we can set a new parameter for this brush. So the higher your subdivide size, the lower resolution it is. Okay, make sure it's enabled up here too. Now as we're sculpting, you can see that it made those areas super low poly. Now it may not look super clean right now, but it gives you a lot of freedom to create whole new faces and uh, different forms and change your silhouette dramatically. And we can also make it to where it's not nearly as uh, low poly. Let's just lower the subdivide size down. And that's a good area to work with. You can apply that Sculptress Pro to your smooth brush as well. So as you're smoothing, you're changing topology. As you're sculpting, you're changing topology. Maybe you want to keep dynameshing also. You can still dynamesh, so you might as well just do both. So you can change it, get more interesting forms, and start moving from there. So we're going to use these tools to establish the base. Okay, so now let's keep in mind the things we want this rock to achieve. We want to make sure that each side's reading in a way that's a little bit unique, but still cohesive to the overall rock itself. And something that's really key to keep in mind is you want forms and cracks and shifts in the rock to carry over from plane to plane. You don't you don't want it to be like a projection on each side because then it, it just it's not nearly as cool and it's not as functional when it comes to putting it into your environment. So I'm just taking this cliff crack here and I'm bringing it over. So if you're working on a tablet, it's a little bit easier to achieve because you can kind of tilt your pen and come in at an angle. If you're not using a tablet, it is a little bit more difficult just being transparent, there we go. And, and we'll re-emphasize a lot of these forms and uh, stage two, which is more of the details. This is still the main forms, very low poly, just focusing on the shape. Starting to get kind of interesting down there, I'm liking that. To see where some of the shapes are starting to kind of pop out and suggest what they might be. And I'm just playing on top of those, you know, I'm not, I don't have a super specific vision yet but it's starting to come together and I'm using these processes to help inspire me and create something that's pretty interesting. So you can see it's, it's a lot of iteration. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and keep going through this process. That way stage one is at an area where I can explain and go over some of the details that we achieved in stage one. Okay, so this is where we landed for the end of stage one, establishing the base. So not a whole bunch has changed since I went offline for a second there, basically. The main difference, as you can see, is I, I continued a lot of these forms from, from plane to plane, so each side I wanted them to carry over, and that really is important because it starts to make your whole mesh feel cohesive. You can see as we rotate around, 
continuing the shifts in the rock or continuing. I emphasized some of the forms that I really liked. I wanted to make sure that the top and the bottom from this angle, now it can be used however we want it to be used. However, I wanted two deliberate sides to remain somewhat flat so we can use it for uh, mantling or uh, whatever kind of like modular purpose you might want. But having two flat-ish sides helps in game development so you have a play space you can run around in. Just a little bit of interest there which we can add more detail later. All the forms are continuing and it's really giving us an idea on how the suggestive flow of this character or, or this rock is going to feel. Okay, so stage one is done and we have a base shape that feels pretty good that we can really work with moving on to the next stages. So what I'm going to do here really quick is duplicate this sub tool. We're going to work on a new sub tool version that way in case we get too wild or something happens, we have our backup for our base. Now, what we want to do for stage two is emphasize the shapes that we like, start cleaning this up a little bit. We're not going to move into tertiary detail, but we're going to do things such as start emphasizing these shapes and finding out what I really like about them, what I might want to change, and just making them read a little bit better. That way as we move forward to the next stages, we'll be able to really have a asset that feels polished and has a good amount of attention to detail. This would be an example of, of, of about how far I want to push the detail. There's a little bit of suggestion on the edge that there's a step there, but I'm not going into like really defining cracks or making it too intricate, just enough to where we know what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with this chunk and I'm going to move throughout this, this rock here and kind of do the same thing to various pieces, maybe continuing some of these flowing steps and shelves and plane shifts just to really give us something to work with that's fun. And we have to think about this also from the player's height and modularity. So even though we're going to be flipping this around quite a bit, we know for the most part that it's probably going to be used in a fashion that's either rotated horizontally as it's seen here or flipped and rotated horizontally as seen here. So one of the two. So this side has a little bit more of an extreme shelf up top, and this side is more of a sloping, it's more of a chunky base, right? So we can use it both of those ways on, on all four sides, and technically we could flip it and use it the other way too, but we're gonna design it in a way that's gonna be used for all eight of those variations. Here's a perfect example of like creating a new line that would go down. So that's the sort of detail and form and shape language I'm going to go for in stage two. So I'm going to go through and achieve that and explain what I did. Again, don't want to do it completely in real time. It'll just take too long. But if you guys are interested in me walking through this more in real time again and making a better video than I did the first time around, let me know and uh, that's something we can do. All right. Okay, so here's both of our rock sculpts side by side. And you can see that the overall form still carries over from stage one. But there's a more clear vision. Things aren't as loose and messy. We've added some extra planes. We've connected more of these edges. So you can see here, we look at the bottom, this big chunk that we started with. There's now very clear plane shifts and uh, medium sized cracks along with uh, just cleaner edges. It's not completely fixed up. And that's where stage three comes in and that's our refinement stage. So a few things here. One, we're going to want to clean this up a little bit. So it's still uh, a little bit messy. So we're gonna make sure that reads well. 
And then after that, we're going to find forms that are really going to help sell this shape. And we're going to emphasize those just a little bit more and make sure they, they really make this asset feel cool and unique and j just reads really well overall. So let me give you an example. Let's also go ahead and duplicate this just like we did last time. Hide these other ones. Okay. So first, we're going to up the poly count for these. So 440. Okay, cool. So just to give you an example of why we want a higher poly count is one. So now when we start smoothing some of these edges and shipping them, it's going to have a, a clear line and plane shift. So it's not going to be as pixelated. We're going to be able to really establish what we're going for. And it will also give us the ability to do things like this, which is connect even smaller lines, and, uh, cracks within our sculpt here and play with some shapes. We don't have to do this everywhere, but this will help take it just that step further. And that's where uh, earlier I was talking about really continuing your lines and your planes across your model. Separate this plane a little bit. So this is the refinement stage. So before we're like going to any kind of photorealistic territory, we're going to go through, make sure our sculpt is really where we want it to be. It's looking better, has a little bit more detail, it's cleaner and it's set up for success going into our final detail and polish. So let's go ahead and move on to the final stage and that's just adding that little bit of polish and extra detail and we're going to do that by using some alphas from the a jolt bug alpha pack so what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate our last sub tool we just made let's move this over and let's make sure that we have a layer so we're going to go down the layers make a new layer and this is going to be how we're going to record uh, the detail that we're putting on and then later adjust the strength this is really important in production when you need to go back and reiterate and change and adjust the feedback. So that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to pick a few key spots to add some extra detail. Near where the player is, get some detail 
close to the eye level of the player, besizing some of these edges. Don't want it to look too repetitive. So we'll lay him in there, we'll adjust the strength, and if we need to, we'll tweak him as well. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the results that we have here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use uh, the trim smooth border again to kind of pull back some of the detail where I don't want it. After we fine tune it here with our layer, you can see as I lower this, those details disappear. And as I raise it up, they come back. You can exaggerate it past where they are. I want to keep it fairly minimal. Something kind of like that feels really natural. Plenty of room for the eye to rest. Still a lot of detail in there. And outside of just adding details, having these stacks of layers once you're at this point and you're doing refinements is just really good practice. That way you don't lose work. Uh, or have to redo a whole bunch of different things. You could just turn a layer on or off and then add a new one. Well, that's pretty good on the sculpting. So this wouldn't be a complete tutorial if I didn't show you how this sculpt actually functions in a game environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it works inside of Unreal. All right, so here we are inside of Unreal. And as you can see, we're getting a lot of use out of just this one rock. You can rearrange this rock in various ways and find some interesting shapes that really work well together without having to have a whole bunch of different assets. So as you can see, we're able to get creative, use what we made, and really start building out these scenes that are really interesting and a lot of reusability. But I wanted to give you an idea on how you could use uh, world space, triplanar textures, and modular cliff assets to really build out your level and your scene. So this is just a tiling texture I made, threw together a shader, and you can see all the areas that we left out and didn't quite get down to the micro details uh, is honestly solved by the texture itself anyways. All right, Legends, that basically concludes the tutorial here. Hopefully you found some value in it and it will help elevate some of your workflows. Again, if you liked it, give it a share, like it, comment below what you want to learn next. I have a few ideas, but I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking. Until next time, see ya.